Hey, what is up guys? So I've got a very awesome duel for you guys today. It's going to be a live commentary between Paul Empty Jar Cooper versus Chris LeBlanc. Two YCS champions going head to head. I can't wait to see what both of these players are playing. We're going to be keeping the watcher chat open for the most part and I'll briefly explain to you guys what cards are actually uh, getting activated. They have some bad blood between each other and so they're actually dueling over here. I'm gonna, I'll put this like over here. Let's, let's put this over here so we can kind of cease the uh, card effect still. Uh, so here you are still tributing itself for a Gear Gear armor, I believe. Is that's, I, I didn't see exactly, but I'm pretty sure that's what he went for. And he's going to be able to activate its effect, flip it back face down. So, um, now that we know uh, Gear Gear Arsenal's effect, I guess we can put it here. I wish this was doing, I was kind of doing this live so I can tell you, I can ask you guys where you want this watcher chat to go. Because I want to keep it up, because I think it's going to be absolutely hilarious. Let's just move it right here. We don't need to know how many watchers. Actually, that, that doesn't help, because we still can't uh, read the card effect. So, Chris is going to go ahead and get the effect. Oops, I apologize. That was actually my timer. That was supposed to tell me that uh, they're going to duel. <laughs> but it's fine. I actually joined a little bit early here. So he's going to go ahead and add an accelerator to his hand with the effect of Gear Gear armor. So Gear Gear is going to be looking pretty good, guys. I mean, there's that new Gear Gear XYZ coming out, and we have the Gear Gear X getting its reprint. So this could be a very viable deck very soon. So he's going to go ahead and normal summon Karakuri Strategist. I'm going to call him 248. I like to call the Karakuris by their uh, number. Uh, simply because it's a lot easier to remember them uh, that way. Man, if, if I had to minecraft some of the Karakuris, I probably couldn't do it. <laughs> I would probably call the wrong card. So he's going to be able to flip up Gear Gear Accelerator, and then he's going to go ahead and add another card. So these guys are also, I believe they bet 100 bucks, but uh, I don't know if they were just, you know, saying that just because they were talking smack to each other, but uh, I want to know what Paul Empty Jar Cooper is playing. Um, I mean, he is known for his, uh, of course, his empty jar, but uh, he also has been playing Heratics for a while, but uh, this might actually be game right here, depending on what uh, Chris actually decides to go for. So he's going to go ahead and synchro up for a level 7 monster. That's going to be a Karakuri Shogun MDL 00 Bure over here, which actually just got a reprint as well. So this deck looking kind of budget friendly over here, so I think... Uh, if Paul can at any point, oh, I was just going to say, if at any point he can pull off a Torrential Tribute, he is going to be golden, and Torrential Tribute is successfully activated, and that hurts just a little bit. But the thing is, Chris hasn't really lost a huge amount of card advantage. Usually a Torrential would, you know, ruin uh, Karakuri's, but he technically could have kind of tried to risk it and let him go for another uh, Synchro, but if that Synchro had been Stardust, then yeah, of course, Torrential wouldn't be the greatest card at, after that point. But uh, still, nonetheless, it got rid of one Beret, and it got one uh, rid of one of the 248s, and as well as one of the, um, uh, what's it called, the... Uh, the dogs, this guy over here, what is his name? Saizan, the 313. <laughs> so he's going to go ahead and activate Blaster's effect. So right now, for me, I'm going to be rooting for Chris LeBlanc over here simply because he's not playing Dragons. Uh, I don't know both of these players personally, um, but uh, I mean, they seem like they're nice gentlemen over here. But uh, I do want the underdog to win, I would say, out of both these uh, duelists over here. The underdog deck would definitely be the uh, Gear Gear. So he's going to go ahead and get the effect of a Gear Gear MK2. And let's go ahead and see what he actually decides to um, bring out. So he's going to go ahead and bring back uh, Armor over here. So uh, Armor will probably flip itself face down. Uh, is it in defense? Yeah, I think you have to put it in defense position. Yeah, in face up defense position. So you can smack him for a thousand and then just flip this card face down. Uh, I mean, there's no really really is why you would flip this face down first. I'm trying to think of if there's any reason. I mean, I guess if there was, what is it, isn't it Dark Mirror Force? Where the, when they declare an attack, it destroys all face down monsters or something like that. It's something absurd like that. It's just, it never works because, you know, Dark Mirror Force is like not even meta. But uh, let's go ahead and move the Watcher Shot over here. I think it's, it's much cleaner over here, but at the same time, some of you guys might be unfamiliar with these. I guess we can minimize it on each time that um, uh, we're talking about the cards. So if Paul wins, we riot. All the watchers. Yeah, winning. <laughs> but uh, he just noticed some watchers. <laughs> so let's go ahead and see what he makes. Uh, or if he'll just go ahead and at this point, he'll just go ahead for the attack. Okay, so he's actually going to go for a larger push right here. So he's going to special summon Accelerator, which uh, he's able to do. Stop slow playing. <laughs> oh man, the bad blood. I love it. Uh, oh, I, ha I actually have to. Uh, I'm just going to type in a dot. Th that way. Uh, it doesn't make me, uh, 
get kicked because of inactivity. I, I hate that with uh, Dueling Network. You get kicked for inactivity, especially before when they didn't update their servers. I think at one point, uh, the max users was like 5,000, and um, if uh, there was like 5,000 users, you couldn't sign back on. <laughs> so let's see what he actually makes. So he's going to go for a Gear Gigant X, and let's see if he has a response for it, because if he happens to have a bottomless, he needs to use it now. Otherwise, you're going to allow the other player to get too much of an advantage, so he's gonna get the effect of that, and let's see what he's able to actually uh, add to his hand. He's gonna go for Birdman. I think Birdman's at one, which is it's kind of sad. I really want that card at three. Like that card is such like a balanced card, in, in you know some aspects. It was really OP with Tengu, but Tengu's not a thing anymore. So he's gonna go ahead and attack. Okay. He could have actually pushed for a lot more, but you, you don't know what those back row could be. I mean, it's dragons. I would have just tried to go for a game. But we did see a torrential tribute, so maybe Paul is not actually playing straight up dragons. Maybe it's. Heck, it could be, I don't know, Battle of Boxers. I doubt it, but you never know. Battle of Boxers is still kind of a good deck. Like, like, once Yoke becomes too strong, like sometimes you can't do anything. Uh, G Prison, on the other hand, is a fantastic card against that, uh, uh, that Yoke over there. Oh, I, I guess Paul is complaining about his hand. I would never complain about my hand uh, or reveal to my opponent that I don't have a bad, uh, I don't have a good hand um, when you know you're playing, especially if you're playing for money. <laughs> All right, so he's gonna go ahead and special summon uh, Blaster by banishing a title and a Flambeau Guard. So he's gonna get the effect of title, and he's probably gonna switch out another title. Unfortunately, I don't think there's any good like water dragons. Uh, to my knowledge, other than like title, like that's all you play. Like for Earth, at least you have Exploded Dragon. For Wind, you have Debris Dragon. For Fire, you have Flambeau Guard, which is basically like it's not really a good card. It's just more that it, it happens to be a tuner. <laughs> that's like the only reason, and it's also Fire. So he's gonna go ahead and attack Gear Gigant X, which is a thing that you kind of need to get rid of. Um, and I guess that is gonna be the extent of his turn. Uh, I think he really, oh. Main phase two, he's gonna go ahead and synchro up for something. I I probably would have made a Crimson Blader and attacked over that. Uh, but what is he gonna make in this position? Oh, okay, he's gonna go for Stardust Spark Dragon. Now, I don't find this card to be that great against Gyrgyz. I mean, he can always just attack over it. I mean, obviously, it could, you know, it has an effect for it. Like, um, once during this turn, it can't be destroyed by all my card effects. Maybe he, Paul Empty Jar Cooper is just trying to keep himself alive, perhaps. Uh, I can't think of a reason why Star Spark Dragon would be a necessary card to make. Um, depending on what these back rows are, I mean, if it, one of them MS him, you could have like Scrap Dragon, uh, Pop, and I think you couldn't chain it to it, right? I don't think the destruction is a cost for it, but uh, yeah, you could have done that. Um, I, I And then just pop this, because this card, like, it gets too much little free advantage that you just, you can't allow your player to gain. Um, once the uh, Gyrgyz gain their momentum. The, the problem is like, you can't really punish them too hard. And he's going to go ahead and activate Vanity's Emptiness, which is a fantastic card. And Chris says, okay, that's fine. So at this point, there's very few things that uh, he can do. So he can flip it back face down. But uh, I think that that's a fantastic uh, card to go for. When you happen to have Vandy's Emptiness, Start a Spark Dragon is a fantastic card to go for. So I understand why he actually made this now. Now he should attack uh, this one over here. At least I would have. I, okay, he doesn't want to get into damage. Um, because the thing is, this could still open up rank 3 XYZs, which can, you know, obviously deal with that if, you know. Actually, I don't think they have room. Um, but he's going to be able to finally kill armor, and then that way he can stop knitting those pluses. But uh, it already netted, I don't know, what is it, like three cards already? Like, it netted a lot of advantage for him already. But um, Chris uh, definitely needs to get rid of Vandy's Emptiness because I don't think there's very much you can do in that deck against Vandy's Emptiness. Like, once that card is out, uh, I mean, a lot of decks can't do anything. Uh, I mean, even Dragons, I mean, that shuts them down too, but... Dragons, obviously, or any deck that would play Vandy's Emptiness, you would want to go for your Vandy's Emptiness or flip it face up once you've already established, you know, control over the game or you're at a uh, state in where you're just going to lose <laughs> if you don't flip it up immediately. But um, it, it can still be targeted, right? Uh, can be destroyed by Battle Bar card effects. Because I'm thinking, like, of Deep Prison. I'm pretty sure Deep Prison will probably be a relevant card, uh, perhaps soon. <laughs> uh, he's going to need this. 
I hope you main MST. And the thing is, uh, the player in the red might not even main deck uh, more than, you know, one. Um, in Gear Gears, I don't really see a real reason why you'd play uh, so many MST in Gear Gears, because one time you don't really care about your opponent, you know, utilizing their uh, like cards against you. Seven Tools has been a very popular card over the past couple days because of the guy that won with Gear Gear and he played triple Seven Tools, so Seven Tools is kind of a card that people kind of been playing over MST. But uh, the problem is, Chris is really on the defensive side right now, and uh, he, you know, he needs to because uh, at any moment, you know, the player in the blue can just simply uh, send something to the graveyard, perhaps like blaster to pop something, and then he could just OTK, and then you know, obviously, Bandy's emptiness being gone because something was the way. So he's going to activate Fiendish Chain on Stardust Spark Dragon. So let's see if Paul happens to have an answer against this. Um, uh, let's see, because I'm trying to think of what, uh, what Jabber, I don't think Dragons, I really don't think they main deck MST, but the problem is, um, he's going to use the effect, oh, okay, and he's going to protect that, even though it should be negated by Phoenix Chain, I believe, but he's still, you could still technically, you know, declare that he's activating it, but since the, uh, I'm thinking since the chain resolves backwards, he is chaining, uh, Star Spark Dragon to the activation of Phoenix Chain, therefore it would work? I'm not positive on that, um, but maybe Chris wants him to do that. I, I assume that that's what uh, uh, you know uh, Chris wanted him to do anyways. I, I was unaware that uh, that would actually work, but hey, I'm pretty bad at this game. Let's go ahead and open up Watcher Chat. So, um, <sighs> Ooh, there's that card I was talking about, guys, that new seven tools. And unfortunately, this is actually going to get rid of, well, I would have thought it would have got rid of Fanny's emptiness, but I... he's just, he's asking him question mark. Uh, yeah, I really don't know uh, what would happen because then this card, because you know, card resolve backwards. This card would then uh, resolve right, and then that would negate this. Would that still protect that? I, I don't know. See that that's where I'm like, uh, I prefer Dev Pro, you know. So emptiness is gone. Maybe, maybe Paul had that planned all along. I, I honestly don't know. <laughs> because, uh, like I said, uh, I'm pretty bad at this game. Uh, Cooper cheat. <laughs> cheat. Uh, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, oh, okay. I know he can't do that. You know why, guys? You can't chain uh, a Stardust Spark Dragon. In fact, then chain seven tools because uh, this would be spell speed two. This is spell speed three. Um, you can't save it. So emptiness is gone. That that would be correct. Uh, I can't even do it. Paul is actually correct. He can't actually activate seven tools because he's actually already declared this. This is, this is one reason why I love uh, Dev Pro guys. But the thing is, you know, as you know, even I mean, both these guys, YCF champions, making some uh, mistake over here, which is fine. I mean, hey, I make mistakes all the time in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. It is a game where you know mistakes happen, and sometimes without a judge, it's it's kind of hard to see. Uh, sometimes you know these misplays and stuff. Thought you were activating. Uh, he can't actually do that. So, I guess they're going to continue on. Um, I, I don't know if... Uh, the Phoenix Chain is going to get a little bit annoying. Uh, because, uh, you know... He's going to have to... I guess he could get another monster out and like tribute some something for it. Oh. So I guess Paul is now removing it, the counter from this? Perhaps it doesn't work. I have no idea. I apologize, guys, that I, I'm not on top of this uh, game as far as that ruling. But if anyone knows, I'm I'm pretty sure um, I'm pretty sure you can't use seven tools. Uh, I'm not that bad. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and resume uh, the video once I decide to make the play. Oh, okay. So Chris is going to activate Phoenix Shane. Paul Cooper is now going to activate seven tools and send it to the graveyard. Manny's emptiness will now die. That's to my knowledge. Alright guys, so they finally resolved what would have happened. So, this is exactly what happened. So, Phoenix Chain was activated. Paul Cooper then activates 7 tools. Then, Vandy's is now destroyed because, you know, 7 tools obviously goes to the graveyard. And when any card is set from the field to you, <laughs> um, your, uh, when this card, when a card is sent from the deck or the field to your graveyard, uh, you have to destroy this card. So, he's going to activate a uh, Sacred Sword of 7 stars, and he's going to uh, banish Redox. And then he's going to be able to add a Redox and uh, get some draw power on. <laughs> I'm hearing you can't. I, I... What? Okay. So, either way, I don't know 
what exactly they were arguing over. Um, I just know that you couldn't chain this effect to something like seven tools of the bandit. <laughs> so he's gonna go ahead and add um, the redox, and let's see if he's gonna go ahead and push. Oh, he's got dragon for me. Okay, so. Paul Cooper right here having a huge advantage. So he's going to be able to discard Redox because, you know, he already activated its effect. Why not uh, get rid of it and uh, search out for... Ooh. He's going to go for Trigon. Now, I haven't really seen this card uh, in action. Like, I know it's a fire, so it'll work for, like, Blaster. But uh, it also is a Union monster. And do they even use it for that? I think they just use it because it's a level 3 that you can go Debris Dragon and equip to it. Uh, or not equip to it, just Special Summon it, uh, right? Because it's 500 less attack. Okay. So he's going to go ahead and do that, and then, I'm curious, this Torrential Tribute is activated. And remember, he has not used the effect of Stardust Spark Dragon, because he, he can't use it in response to uh, seven tools of the bandit. So he's going to then protect uh, itself, okay. Um, and Crystal Blanc is thinking, because remember, he can still, okay, let's say he can Veiler that or something like that. Okay. All right, so um, Paul has only went for, I believe, Redox's effect this turn. So he can still go for other things, perhaps, if he wants to. I mean, there's still a bunch of dragons in the graveyard, so. But uh, he, he might exhaust too much resources. I don't know. I, I wish I could click. Like, they really need a feature on Dueling Network where you, you could at least view their graveyard. So he's going to go ahead and special summon Blaster. I don't believe he's went for Tidal's effect. So he can still go for Tidal. Ooh, he's going to bomb his trap hole that Blaster. And Blaster, unfortunately, will not get it searched because, you know, he activated his effect to Special Summon. I, I believe before, uh, like a long time ago, when these cards were still, like, in beta, I believe that when they were... It, it, it didn't have that effect, like, uh, once per turn it was either of the effects. It was more so, like... Uh, set up so it was like i don't remember the exact wording on it but i remember it a long time ago on dev pro i believe y even if it was banished even though you special summoned it you would still get its effect even though it would get banished like by bottomless trap hole uh because the effect where it was once per turn it was either once per turn you could special summon it or once per turn um you could um you know add the card so it was way more op so it looks like he's just gonna go for 2400 points of damage is that really necessary I, I, I don't think it really being that necessary. Um, but it does still put a monster on board, and, you know, technically at any moment, Gear Gears, Karakuris can just, you know, OTK. So we'll see what Chris has uh, in the store for this. I think what really hurt him is that uh, he should just kept that card, uh, that Vandy's Emptiness, and waited for the other card to die, because even though your monster uh, can't attack, your opponent can't special summon. And, like, I would have just waited to the point where I was able to win. Uh, and then I would just get rid of, you know, the uh, the Vanity's Emptiness. Because you can get rid of it at any time. Ooh. I guess he's got another one. <laughs> so he's going to uh, activate Vanity's Emptiness. And now, during the end phase, this returns to Paul Cooper's hand. So, I don't know. I don't know if that was... I mean, like, like what do you do? Like... With Gear Gig, I can at least throw up monsters, but Paul, I don't think you can, like, what do you have that has attack in that deck? I, I can't think of anything that has attack in that deck. Um, so he's going to go for the effect of Ravine, and then he's going to send one card to the graveyard. Um, man, I, I can't think of something that I would do. Because this point, oh, what? I from the oh oh from the deck oh okay never mind right he sent it right, right so he sent it from the deck to the graveyard so therefore um, he can go ahead and special summon so right now Paul can push for game unless LeBlanc has mirror force um, even mirror force I don't know if he's gonna go for a Draco sack to pop first I mean he could probably go for Draco sack pop and still throw up enough um, he's gonna get title end. There's like, there's no out for this. I, I think it's gonna be game over for Chris LeBlanc. Um, Dragons are just still like, to me, I still think that they're the best deck in regards to if you want to take the game as serious as possible, and you have to win. But uh, you know, the character Gear Gear deck is pretty linear too. I mean, you have like a lot of options uh, in the deck, but generally it's it's 
it's making the uh, double O at multiple times and just going for game. But uh, we'll see what he makes. Oh, he's going for Stardust at this point. And so at this point, he's just going to push for game. But remember, ooh, he's going to Solemn Warning, that Stardust Dragon. Okay. And Paul Cooper is just going to be like, don't even worry about it, bro. But, Chris LeBlanc, he's a good player. He might... Do we have a Gores? We don't have a Gores. Uh, uh, I was hoping we could see it go out with a bang, perhaps, and like a, get, get a cowboy out there somehow. Uh, I don't think it's even possible, though. Because you have, like, Debris Dragon as level 4, and that's about it, so probably not going to happen. But, uh, Chris has got one chance right here to make something happen, and unless the back row is return, I don't think it's something you have to really worry about. <laughs> Let's see what he pulls off, though. Because I am totally curious myself to see what actually comes out um, from Chris LeBlanc, if he can actually pull something off. Uh, I wish I remembered exactly what card he had. In his uh, hand. Blaster, come on, 500. Why are we talking about? Oh, we're talking about 500 viewers. Oh. Yeah, I, I think they're doing a match. Uh, I just saw someone ask. <laughs> Alright, so. Yeah, the Vanity's Emptiness is pretty OP. And before Sixth Sense, <laughs> uh, swing over Blaster for game. Oh. Setting is never good against the dragons. <laughs> so you can tell they have some bad blood. I think both of them actually were like, uh, I think Paul mentioned that before. He's like, are you stalling or something like that? Slow playing. Oh, never mind. It, it was only Paul. Paul, Paul, was, Paul was the one that was calling them out for uh, slow playing. But uh, I mean, sometimes you do need to think about your moves. I mean, it's not like this game is timed anyway. So it's not like you can stall for time and somehow win in doing it. Or, unless you're counting those players. I faced against these players sometimes. This is back in the day, though. Um, they would, like, even if you won, they would just, they would just, they won't admit defeat. They'd be like, okay, I need you. They would just wait till you leave. And it was like, it was so stupid. Okay, so I guess Paul Cooper takes game one. Sorry the game had, like, some misplay, but, you know, it's just part of the game. Even as, you know, back-to-back -back YCS, well, not, I don't think that, I think Billy Bricks was, like, one of the only ones that had a back-to-back -back, uh, champion in a long time. But anyways, thanks for watching game one, guys. Asian Eyes, signing out.